Crossing Jordan. This is the second of a three-part series that deal with the conquer of Jericho. The first thing we want to deal with is the timing of this whole thing. Uh, crossing over in the springtime during the flood time. And to say the least, this was not according to Canaanite schedule. They thought they had more time to prepare. I'm sure that if they had just waited until the spring floods were over and then crossed over, that Jericho would have had all their alliances coming in, all their different city-states would be there to face them in, in battle. Uh, they, this, this crossing over at this point was a total shock. And they were left alone. Uh, when I say uh, alone, it was not 100%. All that the other uh, city-states could do is send a few soldiers according to Joshua 24, uh, there was about seven other city-states that sent a few soldiers. So they were inside the city at, at the time, but that's all they could do. It, this uh, timing was bad. But for Israel, it was great timing because springtime was a time of war. It was the best time to go to battle because of food. Uh, during the winter time, that's their rainy season and so the, uh, the 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 mud and getting around was kind of awkward but in the springtime the the rain stops and then you have crops and food and so it was better able to support an, an, an army there's a big difference as the priest are taking the ark of god down to the water they probably uh, some of them saw the crossing of the Red Sea. They knew how it was supposed to be done. I mean, after all, in the crossing of the Red Sea, Moses held out the staff and the waters parted and then the wind blew and for hours they stood there and they watched the land being dried off and they knew the water was supposed to part before you start crossing. But they got closer and closer to that water and in the, in the Jordan River, and it just didn't part, didn't part, and finally they came down to the very edge, and they were told just to keep going, keep going. So in a sense, it took a lot more faith. They had to actually wade out into the water before anything happened. Then the actual parting of the water was a little bit different. It refers to the city of Adam, which is about... Uh, 10, 15 miles north of here. Today it's called Adam's Bridge. And there's three ways to look at that. Uh, some hold that they actually crossed at Adam's Bridge, and, and I, don't, I, 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 I don't hold to that. The second one, which has some, some merit, says that the water stopped here where they were at, and it backed up all the way up to Adam. And that is a legitimate viewpoint. The third, the one I hold to, is that the water stopped up at Adam. And actually, they couldn't see where the water stopped. All they knew is they walked out in the water, and suddenly the water level started going down. Started going down. So they just kept walking. They kept walking until they were in the middle of that, of that river, and the water had all flowed down. So when the people started crossing, there was probably still some water there, but it wasn't like the Red Sea. There was plenty of rocks here. They could walk across on the rocks as they crossed the Jordan River. This particular spot, as they're looking across the river and they get the other side, they see this desert. I mean, you know, this whole, this whole riff area right here is just nothing but desert. And, and they're probably saying, where's all this land of milk and honey? Uh, where's this bountiful area? This, this looks as bad as where we came from out in, out in the wilderness. Only, only Joshua and Caleb knew that the land was plentiful and it was beautiful. Uh, they were the spies that had come up through this land and they saw how, how good it was. I'm sure they had to kind of reassure the people that this was a good land. This spot, the spot where they crossed it, th throughout the rest of the Bible, is a very important spot. Not only did they cross right here, but this is where uh, Elijah took Elisha and they came down and, and Elijah hit the water with, with his cloak and it's... It, 
and, and it parted, and they walked across on dry ground. And then Elisha went back the other direction doing the very same thing. But it's also the place where Jesus came and was baptized by John. And not to, not to uh, shadow those right there, but it's also the spot where we take people when we go to Israel to give them an opportunity to be baptized in the Jordan River. Now there's two locations where people go. One is up north, up, uh, up north, and that's a good location because the water's cleaner there. It's just coming out of the Sea of Galilee, but it's not the spot where all, the, all this happens. We go, we, we go ahead and choose to go here, even though the water is a little bit more muddy, because it's the actual spot where all these things happen. Well, as Joshua is going across the Jordan, and as he's preparing to go in the land, he, he, he has a schedule. He knows what he's supposed to do. His, the rest of his life is mapped out. First thing to do, get across that river. Second, build the monuments. He builds one right in the middle of the Jordan and one on the other side. And then he has to take care of the circumcision. That had to be taken care of. And also it was time for Passover. So those two things had to happen. And then, and then finally he had to get a water source. You say, well, where's that in the Bible? Well, it's called Jericho. <laughs> That's why it was so important that Jericho be first. Why they had to go there because there was a water source there that could, that could uh, meet the needs of these two million people. They had a spring there that produced a thousand gallons per minute. It was huge. It provided water for this city and that entire area. Uh, uh, it was so important. And so they conquered the land, they destroyed the city, and they took over that water supply, which they used the rest of the time. Their base of operation was right here with that huge water source. After that, Moses had told Joshua to take the people to Shechem. There between the two mountains, he was to, he, he was to read the law of God. So that's why he went to Ai. He wasn't just going to Ai to conquer it. It was on the way to Shechem. And, and once they took care of the, the, the law of God at Shechem, then he was free to conquer the land. And he had the southern campaign and the northern campaign. And that's basically the outline of the book of Joshua. And it's all on Joshua's mind right here. Well, come back when we give you the third part of this little series of Conquering Jericho as we give you more insights on the story. <music>